Hey folks, welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than normal in that we're going to be doing a bit of an unboxing. And the reason for the unboxing is actually kind of cool. I recently started acquiring some retro VR equipment. So, as an example, I have this right here. These are the Virtual IO eyeglasses. Pretty fashion forward, if I do say so myself. And these came out in 1995, required a serial port and a VGA port, and are no way compatible, it seems, with Windows 10. So, with my current PC, it's not something that's going to happen. Uh, I tried getting a micro display port to VGA adapter and a serial to USB adapter. And those just didn't cut it with the virtual IO eyeglasses. Uh, the eyeglasses seem pretty cool. Um, they play, I think, 20, maybe 21 classic DOS and Windows 95 based titles. So I am looking forward to checking out the content that I can with the eyeglasses once I have a computer that's capable of running them. I also recently acquired one of these. Now this may look familiar to some folks. This is the Oculus Development Kit, or DK1 as it were, and it stopped having support with Oculus Runtime 0.8 and doesn't really work with modern versions of Windows 10. So that brings me back to the reason for the unboxing. This right here is the Gateway FX6850 51U. It is a powerhouse of a computer if it was a decade ago. So I bought this computer to be a audiovisual editing computer at Fry's Electronics probably 2012 and it was quickly surpassed by a laptop that I purchased around the same time it was much more convenient and roadworthy. So I never even took this out of the box. It's been sitting in my living room getting sun damage on the box for most of that time. So today, we're gonna go ahead and unbox it. Now we're gonna move the mouse out of the way because that is not part of the gateway box. We're gonna take the gateway box down And I do have to say, it's like 50 pounds. It's not a light computer in any way, shape, or form. And we're going to get to the treasures that are inside. So here we go. We have the FX series setup guide. Very, very cool. Very cool. Uh, it shows that it needs a connection to a display has either VGA, which will be very useful for these right here, or HDMI, which will be very useful for this right here, or DVI, which I've honestly never really had a use for. Obviously, since DVI is no longer on computers, neither did a lot of other people. Um, it does come with a keyboard and mouse. I'll probably just use a different keyboard and mouse that I already have. However, they are both available as PS2 devices and as USB devices. Both work uh, on this particular PC. It's got Ethernet. Does not seem to have wireless LAN at all. That's actually going to be interesting as well. Um, and a power cord, of course. Registering. That kind of junk. But it's the standard, you know, quick start guide that you got with a computer 10 years ago. So this box right here, not sure what's in it. We'll find out in just a moment. Hmm. It says gateway. It's got that cow on it. Can't really see these unfortunately because of the lighting, but it's got that cow on it. Um let's see here. Important information how to create Windows XP or Windows 7 recovery disks. Man, I hope this has Windows XP on it. I hadn't even thought of that. 
pretty sure it's a Windows 7 PC, but Windows XP might even be more fun. Uh, and then it, also in this box is the mouse, which will probably stay in this box, to be honest, because I already have another mouse. Uh, but it does have the cool um, Gateway Cow logo on it. It has an antenna for wireless, which means it probably does have some form of Wi-Fi. That's cool. That's good to know. Uh, this is a VGA to, I believe, DVI adapter. So this might be helpful if I need to do two VGA devices at once, which may, may, may come in handy. And then the power cable, which is standard. So again, we may not actually need to use. So that's the top little box here. No keyboard yet, just, just the mouse. Then we've got another little cardboard box that is completely empty. Some nice foam padding next to the cardboard box. I think this is so that when it was in the box, you have that cardboard box and then the padding, this box doesn't shift around. But I think there's probably a little bit more intelligent way to do things nowadays, right? All right, so underneath that is another piece of padding, foam padding this time. You'd think this is about the size of a keyboard, but there is not a keyboard underneath it. No, sir, or ma'am. Directly underneath is this monstrosity of a computer. And it doesn't seem to have like it's one giant piece of foam around it. Okay, good. It, it is grippable. So this is the top piece of foam. So this right here is the top piece of foam from the PC. It's so weird opening a device that's almost a decade old for the very first time. And as I lift the very heavy gateway PC out, we're going to leave this plastic on and we're going to set it to the side for right now. I have realized that the keyboard is indeed in the box to the side of the PC right here. So we'll just open up that keyboard. really just looking for is there a cow logo on this keyboard this is really the coolest part is making sure it matches and there is not this is the most generic keyboard it does have a couple of extra buttons next to the F11 and F12 uh, one brings up a calculator and the other switches screens if you have multiple monitors um, The other interesting thing is the word keyboard in the directions here, it says keyboard information to the user. It's spelled K-E-Y-B-O space A-R-D. Good quality control there. Um, now Gateway, I don't know, I, I don't think as a brand Gateway still exists. I will look that up in just a moment actually because I'm curious about that. But obviously, before we do that, we want to look at the beast of a computer that probably cost a lot of money back in 2011 and is pretty much completely useless here in 2020. Unless you're doing this weird stuff that I'm doing. So here is the last piece of foam. It's a good hat. Uh, actually, it's not, not, not really a very good hat. No, not really stable as, as a hat even. So we're gonna go ahead and put that back in the box. Toss this other foam back in the box. Toss this foam back in the box. Toss this foam back in the box. 
and toss this little box back in the box. Obviously there's some items in here, so we're going to take those out of the box for right now, so you can see what was in the box at the end of the video. We're going to take this box, put it back in the box. We'll leave the keyboard in the box, but you know what that was. I'm going to toss this box behind. So now, the moment of truth, right? This heavy champion of a computer is about to be unveiled to the world for the first time. Um, again, this has a GT440, I believe. Give me just a moment to keep myself honest here. That's right, I took a photo of the specs on the side of the sun damaged box. Um, I may actually take some photos and share with this because like the keyboard um, was an interesting one too. Yes, this has an NVIDIA GT 440 with an impressive 1.5 gigabytes of video RAM. Um, it's also got 8 gigabytes of RAM, which actually at the time, I, like all of these features were huge to me uh, because I was just using ra random standard desktop computers. No, uh, I had no gaming computers or no graphics cards that were capable of really much of anything. And I wanted to get into video editing um, a bit more hardcore. Um, one of the coolest things you can find in any old box is the silica gel. It's a pretty big packet, actually. And then we'll take this plastic wrap off. Um, and I will tell you, this is not a shock, but there is some plastic to peel underneath this plastic wrap. So don't go anywhere, folks. We might have some peeling to do as well. Um, now nah, I'm not going to spoil that. I feel like there may still be some tape fastened to this. No, no, there's not. It's getting there. Plastic. And the plastic is gone now. As you can see, there is some plastic to peel here. Before we do any of that, we are going to move some stuff around on our pedestal here. Pull the PC up. It's a little bit better to see. And again, this Gateway FX computer. Is actually pretty beautiful. Um, on the back, we turn it around. It's got a bunch of ports. Um, across the top, we'll, we'll go over in a few minutes as well. But one of the selling points for this PC was actually this number, the, the level of ports available. So you've got the mouse and keyboard, of course. We've got an HDMI that's protected right here. Um, we will definitely be using the HDMI. Um, there are four USB 2.0 ports right here, two more right below it. Here's the Ethernet jack. Then there's a microphone, a, uh, that's the wireless antenna, and then headphones. Um, or I'm sorry, that's the headphones, rather. Here's the wireless antenna down here, so there's a separate wireless card in here. Then there's the HDMI, DVI, and display port. Awesome, so this actually has a display port adapter. It does not have the VGA adapter. Not so awesome. But you know what we do have? Since this has a display port, we have a DVI to VGA adapter. 
that explains why this was here. I didn't know that that was going to happen, um, but that actually may work to our advantage with this PC, so that's pretty awesome. Um, so I think this is capped, this HDMI is capped, because there's actually not anything behind it. Um, I'm not going to crank the crack the PC open. This is a store-bought PC. I'm not going to mess with it at all. I know it's underpowered. I'm not going to ever upgrade it. The point of it is the fact that it's underpowered. Uh, but these are nice surprises. Having a display port means that I can actually plug in my display port to HDMI adapter that I have for my television um, that is currently what controls the main PC um, that, that I use. Or I can also connect it to a capture box and actually capture to my bigger PC. So. That's going to definitely come in advantage. Um, I was wondering how I was going to do that, if I was going to have to get some weird DVI apparatus or something of that nature, and I won't have to. So that's cool. That's good to see. Uh, I don't know what this latch right here is for. I'm not planning to open it. I can say, though, that it's got two USB 2.0 ports and directly in front of it. Power button is on the top here can't miss it, it's right there. Uh, I'm not sure what these two buttons are. This one looks like it's like a night mode or a sleep mode. The other one looks like it's a file transfer mode. I don't, I don't know. It's a PC. And then on the front, we've got a huge boatload of, ah, it's taped shut. Uh, a huge boatload of bays here, most of which are empty. Um, and then at the very top, we've got the SD card or XD card, compact flash, <laughs> micro SD. Uh, wow, memory stick or memory stick pro. I could download files from my PSP and just toss them on here. That's, that's uh, probably never gonna be used. Um, and then another SD card. So I don't know what this XD card is. This is, a, this is the SD card port. This is a little bit bigger than an SD card, so I'm not sure what XD was. Uh, a photo frame button. I don't know what that's for either. Two more USB ports, another mic port, another headphone port. Um, and then, please shut down the system before swapping the hard drive. Get that, that's a good point. We're gonna start peeling things here. So you can see, there are a bunch of bays here. Lots and lots of bays. So this is very expandable. I'm gonna unpeel that. I don't like peeling plastic off of things unless I absolutely have to. You'll notice my Oculus Go still has that nice reflective sheen of the plastic on the front of it. My Oculus Quest still has the FCC sticker on the front of it. This is going to be pristine in plasticky form until the plastic falls off. And that is all that is inside the computer. Um, so this was an unboxing of an ancient PC for the very reason of I am going to be using this hopefully to share my retro VR experiences. Going back in time. This is the Oculus. DK1 or developer kit. Uh, I just recently purchased it. You can tell it's had some love. Um, I had to do some electrical tape along the side here. I'm hoping this all works. Now, I didn't get the full DK1 kit, but I got enough pieces that will make it work. I did get the DK1 carrying case, which was beautiful. Um, hard plastic, really cool stuff. Um, I did get the full link box. This is it right here. Um, it came attached to the headset and then there's a USB cable that was there in the box. Um, this is just a standard mini USB to USB 2.0. Uh, what was not in the box is any other type of cable. So this USB, or I'm sorry, this HDMI cable here, I'm running my own that I had at home already laid out. Um, there was no DVI cable um, in the box. 
and there were a couple of other cables missing. However, the other lenses, the lenses that are fitted in it right now are the A cups, um, because I'm gonna be using glasses, those are the ones I should be using anyway. And then the B cups and C cups are still in the plastic wrap inside. So I didn't really miss a whole lot. Uh, I am a little bit nervous that the cable was a little bit chewed up um, when I, it, the, the cable had split, the wire inside was a little frayed. Um, but I, I did gently wrap it with electrical tape. It does seem to be okay. The joint is more um, reinforced now, so hopefully it's not going to break or tear or anything of that nature. Uh, and it is showing up in Windows, Windows 7, on the Gateway PC that I unboxed in a previous video. Um, and it's showing up as, as a display at least. Now I haven't installed any of the Oculus SDK drivers yet. Uh, what I'm going to do is make myself a little bit smaller in the window uh, and do that and see if we get a picture and if we can run at least the initial demo that comes with the DK1. Um, this is the really, uh, I'm going to say the second time I've used this, maybe third time I've used this device. I did play Darknet once at PAX. Um, before the DK2 came out, so it was on the DK1. I played this really kind of odd flight simulator, uh, like a Baron, a Red Baron style flight simulator at Gamer X, um, which is another gaming convention. And I think that's it uh, outside of uh, seeing it. Uh, at different places. I, I never really tried it. Um, I did try the 3D mode of Doom 3 as as the Oculus version of that was still in production. They didn't have the Oculus Rift out for that particular demo at, at the convention I was at. Uh, but that's it. That's the only experiences I've had with this device. Now, at this point, everything I've ever used is probably better than the DK1. But I wanted to get one so that I could experience some of the old rich content that was available on the DK1 uh, that sadly has disappeared since the DK1 days. So hope you'll stick around and we'll get to that um, both in this video and in future videos. All right, so I have this folder I'm calling Old VR. This is all demos and different types of software that has been kind of scoured from the internet. Uh, obviously all of this is old at this point. I'm going to start with the Oculus Runtime Revision 1 SDK 0.4.0, which was the earliest runtime I could find. I just want to see if this will actually run here on Windows 7. Uh, this is an unpatched version of Windows 7 on the computer. I did not install any type of Windows 7 updates. So this is still fresh what you would have gotten uh, back in the day. I'm going to install in the Oculus directory. Um, positional tracker driver installation. That's interesting because I don't have a positional tracker with the DK1. Um, yes, I would absolutely like to install whatever it is it's saying that it's doing. Now it's configuring the display driver. And what I'm hoping is once it's done all of this, I'll be able to pick up the DK1 and at least see Windows. Um, creating an uninstaller, it's got a readme file. Let's go ahead and open that readme file, why not? It says, congratulations on installing the Oculus Runtime Installer before using your DK2. Okay, uh, I don't have a DK2. Um, there's currently no firmware update required for DK1. That's good because I don't have a DK2. Now I'm a little concerned that this might be too new. Um, and it wants us to restart. Um, so I will be pausing the video for just a moment so we can restart the computer and we'll be back in just a moment. All right, so we are back. Um, I've rebooted the computer. We're going to do now is we're going to look and hopefully when we go into all programs oculus will show up somewhere here 
There it is, Oculus Runtime. And I think we want to open this Oculus Config tool. Again, never used this before, but let's try it. Okay, okay, so it is showing the Oculus Rift DK1 model. Uh, so recognize that, showing firmware 0 0.18. Sensor Syria, I guess this is a serial number, I'm not sure. Um, user, um, let's use my real Oculus username, E minus. Uh, my gender is male. This is interesting. So um, I am five foot eight. Eye to neck distance. That's see see these are all measurements that I don't recall ever doing before. So that that's interesting. Um, so we'll go ahead and close that. But that's interesting that the DK one had all of those as tools, um, but I don't recall any of the other versions of the Rift ever doing that. Now one thing I have to say is I haven't powered on the little kit here just yet. I'm gonna do that now. So hopefully that will make the display fire right here, and it does, beautiful. So now I'm gonna put the headset on. Um, and I have to say that the headset uh, padding is not the greatest. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and hit show demo scene. And I'm hoping this will show both on the PC and oh there it is so i can't see it on my pc screen right now unfortunately um but i do see view health and safety warning on my screen so we're going to press any key to continue and yeah it's 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 at least pseudo working i'm going to see if i can switch back to i can't switch back to the pc unfortunately And then there's a start button over there. So, um, Oculus VR start. We are seated. Camera bounds don't exist. I kind of want to recenter over here. I'm going to hover over the recenter button, hit the recenter, and there we go. Okay. So, cool. We are now in a demo scene. Uh, there's like a house of cards in front of me and, and that works so that is pretty cool um, pretty sure there's nothing else I can do in this scene um, I can't really walk around and that was a quick look at my initial setup and unboxing of a gateway computer to use with Windows 7 with my oculus dk1 and other retro vr headsets uh, and my first kind of run through the demo scene uh, with the dk1 took quite a while to get that set up so there's some choppiness to that video uh, but i do have another video coming up that is pretty sweet um, that includes me playing through a classic game from the 70s redone for the DK1 and and it kind of just goes to show why to me it was important um, for exploring that classic uh, modern VR uh, software so stay tuned that video is coming up later today um, and I'll have more retro content coming again in the future as well